talk about what masculinity means for you as a queer black man. Start there. Um, I really do believe it's a construct to just like really divide the thing rather that preserves um, who I am is like practicing what I love to call like radical softness, right? Existing in a space as um, a black man to be soft, right? Uh, a black queer man to just be um, as open as possible, as comfortable as possible because we live in a world that tells you that you can't do this, this and that and you have to do this, this and the other, right? And why? Like, why can't I smile? Yeah. Why can't I laugh, right? Um, and so, as much as possible, um, I try to smile. I think a lot about mental health, art and creativity, how they work hand in hand, mm -hmm. how I think it's necessary specifically for queer people of color. My mother says something to me which um, is actually at the core of all of my plays, which is, and she mentioned in the most uh, earnest and loving of ways, which is um, there are millions of people in this world who don't even know you and want you dead. And I just took that like, wow. Yeah. Like these, I'm, in my opinion, a pretty amazing person, right? I, <laughs> you I, I, are. I try to hold my, you thank are. you. And so those words from my mom has always carried me and it reminded me that I have to survive that I have to exist. My father, he handed me a Bible and it was already a scripture open. I do not remember what the scripture was, but this moment was not about what that was. It was about the larger context of it. And so he says, um, there are gonna be a lot of people who's gonna use this thing against you. You need to know it front and back so that when those people come into your space, you can say, no, well, this scripture, this scripture lets me know why it's okay to be me. So when you those people, I was prepped. And then the next morning, uh, he has another dad conversation with me. He says, if you decide to go at the top of our block and scream at the top of your lungs, I am gay, I'll be right there next to you saying, that is my son. It took me a while to get into a space of just, owning who I am and walking in my full truth. But it was I was blessed to have people along the way. And I'm imagining that seeing yourself on stage, that process of being able to speak your truth is yes. liberating. It really I would is. Assume. It really is. So how did you make the jump from slam poetry to playwriting? So I got into playwriting when I found out that I was HIV positive. With that, I remember I was uh, at a church and I remember this might have been my second time uh, at this church. So the pastor didn't know me from a can of paint. And so she comes <laughs> up to me uh, afterward and she says, Diane, it's something that the Lord is telling me. Um, and she says that the Lord is telling me that you need to get back into writing. She didn't know that about me at all. She had no clue that I went to mm -hmm. school for it. So I'm like, oh wow, the Lord is really saying something mm -hmm. to me right now. And that night I went home and I wrote my first play. And how did you reach out for support besides writing? Was there anyone around you who was supportive? Mm -hmm. Um, who did you look to? This was my senior year of, of high school, um, and I was taking on a lot. But as a 17-year-old, not um, out as a, like a queer human being, I was like, I have to be perfect. And so it was for me, I had to make up mm -hmm. for these things that I felt like um, I was letting other people down for, right? Mm -hmm. My like sexuality, all of these things. Mm -hmm. And my mom, she had some prescription pills mm -hmm. I took a handful of her pills. I can't remember how many, I just, just ingested all of them. And I just got in the tub and literally my hope was to float away. Um, fortunately, that didn't happen. A couple of hours later, uh, my parents came home and I was in my room, in bed, throwing up. The floor was just covered in my vomit. And my dad asked, like, what, what happened down here? Are you okay? And of course, really nervous, I didn't want to tell him. And I said, um, I tried to kill myself. And my dad, being a very transparent man, uh, he said, you have two options, Danye. One, you can stay here 
and you can continue to throw up. Not and, today. Right? Not today. <laughs> so you can, so that's the first option. The second option is we can take you to the hospital. And I will tell you, being very honest, you'll have to tell them what happened and they'll probably admit you because of the circumstances in which brought you here. So of course, petrified, um, I said, I'll just continue to throw up. A couple of minutes later, my mom comes in. She's in tears. She just asked me like, what can she do? Um, and she asked me, um, did I do anything? Was it, am I a bad mother? And like that, because when you're going through these things, it oftentimes, at least for me, had nothing to do with the people exactly. around me. Exactly. It was everything that was going on in here. What they feel responsible. Exactly, exactly. But that was for me um, a reminder that I have people that I can talk to. So that support yeah. really did a lot. Even today, I remind myself that I have a village that I can talk mm -hmm. to, that, I, that as I'm there for them, they're there for me. If you could talk to 19-year-old, 17-year-old mm. Danye, mm. what would you want to make sure he knew about mm. life in the world? I would tell him to, to slow down, to know that the race will always be there. Mm. And it doesn't matter where you are, uh, what position you come in, you're going to win that race and you're gonna win it on your terms when you're meant to. And just understand that and some of the things to help you exercise for that race, love, peace, and smile. Just really smile. And when you just bring all of these things, when you exercise with these equipments, that you are gonna win your race because this is the only race that you're gonna be on. And if you practice these, three things you're going to be in this race for the long haul yes thank you for joining us Danye. it was awesome to have you on the thank show thank you for having me thank yeah you so much. for all of our viewers out there please follow us on social media at first person pbs and also check out our youtube channel mm -hmm.